this is a two-way topic because I think maybe the most intriguing game, not the best game, but maybe the most intriguing game of Sunday was the Sunday nighter between the Jets and the Steelers. And it's because of the two of the spots those two teams are in. You see on one side a Steelers team that at four and two has played well in a lot of areas, transitioning from Justin Fields to Russell Wilson at quarterback, a decision that did not go over well in some corners in that of that building. And then you have the Jets who have now pulled multiple levers. They pulled the fire our coach lever. They pulled the trade for a star lever. And I I think the question for the Jets, the questions for the Jets going forward are very big ones. So let's start with the Steelers. I think my big takeaway from the way the Steelers played is credit to Mike Tomlin for giving his team what it needed. Um, We, and I'll include myself on this, I think a lot of us out there saw this decision um, as a peculiar one. I don't think Russell Wilson had done much on the practice field in the summer or in the or, or coming back from the uh, calf injury over the last couple of weeks where people in that building were saying, yes, we have to put Russell Wilson in. Justin Fields had give them, given them a good level of play. Justin Fields is loved in that building. Um, and they feel like they can still get more out of Justin Fields. Like he was – on his way up when he came out of the lineup, the way he led the comeback against the Colts um, was a good example of his growth, even though they didn't win that game. So the decision, again, to go to Russell Wilson was, I think, met with some arched eyebrows in the Steelers building. It's a good example of why Mike Tomlin is who he is, um, having the, the, the strength in his conviction to give this a shot. I think the logic for it is actually – relatively solid too. And we've been over this the last couple of weeks. I said, if there was logic, this would be it. And I still subscribe to this idea that that the logic is this gives you two shots, not one at getting quarterback right. If Russell Wilson takes a turn the wrong way, you can always go back to Justin Fields. If you had stuck with Justin Fields, it would have been harder to pull Justin Fields out of there and have Russell Wilson still in reserve and put him back there. In fact, I think if you had decided just to go with Fields, you would have had to have a discussion of whether or not you keep Russell Wilson on the roster as a backup. So Russell goes out there and plays really well after a really, really shaky start. The first quarter, it didn't look like he could start at NC State. You get him out there in the second quarter, he gets a little bit more comfortable. The deep ball obviously adds something to the offense that maybe they hadn't had before with some of the throws he was making down the field to George Pick Pickens. Is it sustainable? We'll see. But on this night, it gave the Steelers a very real spark. It gave them something to build on. And now it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. But again, they still have that Justin Fields lever if they want to pull it. So I like where the Steelers are coming out of this because while they don't have an all pro answer at quarterback, they do have two options going forward. And the one they're going to be leaning on right now is Russell Wilson. If it works out great, if it doesn't, again, they can always go back to Justin Fields, who's been the ultimate pro through this. As for the Jets, and speaking of levers, I don't know what lever they pull now. Um, you know, they, they fire their coach, they lose, they trade for Devonte Adams, they lose. Now they bring Hassan Reddick back. We'll see. Um, but I think a lot of the fears of a lot of people in that building have come to fruition here. Um, the reason the locker room looked at the firing of Robert Sala as a weird one is because they didn't really understand what it was going to do for the team in the here and the now. And that's what firing a coach in the moment is about. If you're going to do that in season. And the logic a lot of the players had looking at this was, well, the defense is the strength of our team. We're taking the architect of the defense and Robert Sala out of the equation. We're taking a really good defensive coordinator in Jeff Ulbrich and spreading him thin by making him the interim coach. And on offense, we're making the change that Sala would have made to begin with. And I think you saw some of that stress on the team on Sunday against the Steelers. And, you know, what you saw, I think, was a, was, was a defense that was still – it just didn't look right. You know, it just didn't, didn't look right end to end. That isn't playing to its talent now, which I think you wouldn't have said about them three or four weeks ago. And then the offense has all of these moving parts with a new coordinator, a new receiver coming in. It just feels like this is being pieced together right now. It feels like the puzzle pieces are being shoved together. And that's a really tough place to be in the middle of a season as an NFL team. So I'm not sure where this Jets team is going forward. Uh, they are fortunate to have a get right game this week against one of the worst teams in the league in New England. But beyond that, they got the Texans on a Thursday night. That's in another national TV spot. That's ahead of the trade deadline. Um, we've got a very interesting, very, very interesting 10 days ahead for the New York Jets.